All right. Lots of live music happening in our area. I'm Martin Anderson with WNCW. Hope you can get out and uh, support it. Uh, Why, there's an act happening tonight in Asheville at the Gray Eagle. And it's Amanda Shires who's uh, in town. And, uh, well, she's in Spindale Town right now coming on back to the station. Hey, step on up to that mic and say hello. Hello, everybody. I'm so happy to be here. (laughs) It's great to have you here, Amanda. Thanks for uh, coming on in here uh, from your busy schedule. Uh, you live in Nashville, but you were just doing the Late Late Show, right? James Corden. Did you come in from there or Nashville or somewhere I else? Um, I, I did the James Corden show and then went back to Nashville to visit with Mercy for a second and then okay. headed over. All yeah. right. All right. Mercy, for folks that don't know, is... Uh, is Amanda's and uh, Jason's wee girl, who just turned six, I believe. Seven. Seven? Where does it go? Where does the time? Oh, yeah, boy. I don't know. That is a precious time, as you know. It's a pre- precious age. There's a lot of willfulness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, more and more you see your personality, mm-hmm. I'm sure, and all the traits. Well, cool. Glad you got to have a little um, uh, family time before heading out on... This is like a, a major tour you're doing, and this is the first night of it. Tonight is uh, what, like a... This is the first day Amanda Shires is back on the road. I'm like a excited human being. Good going. Like, yeah. Um, I mean, I've done a couple of shows with Jason and then um, my other band, The High Women. And um, I don't know, the last one we played together, this is Zach Setchfield here on guitar. The last one we played together was March 12th, 2020. Wow. Yep. That was a long time ago. And then we drove four days home uh-huh. and sat in our houses like everybody else. <laughs> yeah. We were, we were trying to recall you were here in Studio B at WNCW, and maybe that was one of the last times before the shutdown, but I think you had maybe a few other gigs. But, yeah, that, that shutdown changed a whole lot of things. I, I, hear, I, I read you got into painting and such. I, I painted. I Kept dabbled and busy. painted back in the day. Um, but, um, you know, and I, I always painted on the road like little watercolors or drawings. But, okay. Yeah. I, I, I turned into a painter. Like, I changed careers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, well, now I do both. Well, my wife does uh, both. Yeah, music and painting. Sometimes they seem so not related, and yet I guess they are related to some extent. They occupy the that kind of the brain, yeah. that part of it. Yeah. Well, uh, you have a forty-four show tour occupying your brain for the next uh, I don't know how many weeks or months or stuff. It's uh, it's, it's too fun to even consider. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, it kicks off tonight at the Great Eagle in Asheville. I think you come in, you got another show or two back around in our WNCW listening area as well. But hey, congratulations on the new release, Take It Like a Man. Thank Wonderful you. album. Thank you. Thank you. It means a lot. We worked really hard on it. I, I understand you were just, we just had you on the World Cafe uh, last night. We broadcast that and uh, Raina Doris and you were talking, uh, you, I think you're a nice uh, interview in the, the New Yorker as well. And you're Talking a bit about how I think you had kind of like decided not to record anymore before uh, the genesis of this album. You mm-hmm. kind of said no more. Mm-hmm. Yep, I, I did. I uh, had a few, quite a few, um, uh, I guess, you know, what what I feel like were, were, were harmful experiences that didn't make me feel like it was worth pursuing. Um but it turned out that was that was just, you know, needed COVID to happen so I could process and then find my new, uh, not new, my one true collaborator. Yeah. Which the is one a, and only Lawrence Rothman. Yeah, Lawrence Rothman, your producer, mm-hmm. and uh, they got involved. You got connected, and uh, somehow they, they convinced you, twisted your arm to make it happen. Every step of the way, they twisted my arm. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I'm, I don't know why I'm such a stubborn mule sometimes, but it, it's it's be- we became fast friends, and, and it's just nice to, to find somebody that you work with and do music with that understands what your, what your goal is. Right. Well, I think it's a reminder that uh, to us music fans that... Um, uh, just to, to go and make an album is not necessarily like, you know, you wake up and you're like, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm ready to do it. You had to um, you had to build up trust with the folks you were working with mm-hmm. to feel comfortable sharing these songs, mm-hmm. which are like your little babies, uh, like Mercy yeah. in a way. And mm-hmm. it's just, you know, you had they're to. They're uh, different. They're, they're the same, but they're different because sure. you, you, you make up a new song and then you're playing it in, in front of your friends. And then, um, you know, then you're trying to to explain something so vague as, as, as your vision for it. And the first time you play it, it very much looks like Winston Churchill. You know, <laughs> it sounds like what Winston Churchill looks like, and that's not beautiful. <laughs> and um, 
you know, it, I was coaxed uh, yeah. eventually, and I got my confidence back up, and and I no longer have to sing under the piano. <laughs> and yeah, it's not. I'm not. I'm just not afraid anymore. So. Yeah. Well, great. Well, hooray to Lawrence for helping that happen, and and to you and your great songs on this wonderful album. Uh, your husband Jason Isbell has played guitar on most of the songs, but uh, uh, and, and a great band with horn section and such. We're going to hear a tune from it in a little bit, but for now, you've got guitar. Your guitar, is Zach Setchfield, with you, and uh, you've got your fiddle out. What do you want to do? We're going to be a, a doing a, a real happy little number called "Don't Be Alarmed." <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Me too. Just got to get a drink of this soda. Okay. Again, Amanda Shire is playing tonight at the Gray Eagle in Asheville. One, two, one, two, three. Don't be alarmed. Don't look away Somebody's heart breaks Every hour, every day Don't hide your eyes Don't stare at the sky I'm losing my balance I'm not losing my mind Stay right where you're standing Take it all in At least be witness See it to the end Don't be alarmed I've been broken before don't make excuses as you walk out the door. Don't say it'll be all right. Don't need a lesson in time. You won't make it any better with those throwaway lines. I missed all the signals. Was it flawed by design? I'm losing my balance I'm not losing my mind Stay right where you're standing Take it all in Don't call it dramatic See it to the end Amanda Shires here on WNCW and playing some songs from her new release, Take It Like a Man, uh, live this morning with Zach Setchfield here. And uh, hearing these songs, just as you embark on this tour, a lot of musicians, um, they kind of work through their songs while they're on tour, performing live and working them out, and then they go in and record them. Uh, is this going to feel a little different to you since you've had so long of not being able to do much touring, especially with your own band? Um it's different in the fact that, yeah, you're like you're right, usually you're on tour and then you start working the songs in and then playing them up until release day. Uh, 
the whole situation's different for me because I, I, I don't know about y'all, but um, I'm a lot different person than I was two years ago. Yeah. Talk about that. How, how, how have you changed? It's, it's fascinating how some people just, they just go right back to it and it's like nothing ever happened. Other people are like, I'm a different person. Right. Yeah, I'm a different person. I mean, you know, some things are still intact, like um, as you would expect Amanda Shires to be. But um, uh, I think what changed is I just became a person that is like, um, you know, some people realize that they're living their life and it takes them a long time to figure it out. Well, I think I figured that out like and I'm 40, and that's cool, and I had a near-death experience, like super close to near-death. And then I started t- uh, Transcendental Meditation, and um, I ju- I just, I've been facing my problems, and I don't know. I just feel yeah. like it makes you different rather than just, um, I don't know, not doing that. Mm-hmm. Just kind of ignoring it all and acting like nothing is really there. Right. You're addressing it more head on. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, addressing things and giving things language and Yeah. Just trying to I'm not trying to work on myself, but I am. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, and you're, you're maybe more doing it a little more intentionally now. Right. Definitely. Um, definitely. Yeah. Uh, that near death experience that you scared us when that happened. Uh, I, was that, uh, that was a year or so ago, I yeah. guess it was August 9th. Yeah. Oh, last you year. remember. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that, that alone would do it. But also just, you know, the pandemic and just seeing mm-hmm. the mortality that we all have and have, having to change our lifestyles. That's what I was originally yeah. thinking about is, mm-hmm. OK, you had to change your lifestyles. And, uh, and that can make a lot of changes in folks, too. But maybe the songs you've written. Are are that maybe they feel very different than all the previous albums worth before this "Take It Like a Man." They they do in some ways and not. They're all part of the point from A to B. But um, this one's different in the in in the fact that for me, it's fully realized. Um, I don't know if you've tried to perfect like making a key lime pie or a chocolate cake, but sometimes making a record feels like you're trying to like. What if you're trying to craft the like perfect key lime pie that anybody's ever made? And you're trying, and you're trying, and you're trying, and it and it still turns out like, I don't know, like grandma's banana pudding. <laughs> like it just doesn't come out like you envision it. But um, I, I guess I'm making a a, <laughs> a compare a comparison here to um or an analogy. Yeah. So yeah. I finally I finally learned how to make a key lime pie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it was that kind of uh, in a nutshell, another food metaphor, another. Um, uh, it's breakfast. Time. It, <laughs> I'm hungry. I should have brought get donuts. Or something. Yeah, we should have provided yeah, donuts. Should. No, oh, I should have. <laughs> we got coffee. Um, sometimes I that's had all. Any. Sometimes it's all the breakfast you need. Yeah. Um, d- did that kind of describe the making of the album with uh, with Lawrence Rothman of kind of doing a lot of back and forth and perfecting it or did you leave it to them to do? Or? No, I, I was there every step you of the were way. There. Yeah. And um I had started learning learning how to record before COVID a little bit in the dabbling and during COVID I um kept on graduating and acquiring um different pieces of gear like you do when you're a false engineer and producer like myself and um uh yeah, so I, I became really interested in it, and um, and I think that was important because now I'm able to like identify and name the things where, you know, I want it to be like I want it like I hear it in my head, and and they know what I'm trying to accomplish there with that. Yeah, yeah, they've been doing music as long as I have. Yeah, yeah. So it sounds like while uh, maybe a year ago this time or, or less you were thinking no more records we've got this one and no, that, yeah and over a year because a year, a year ago I thought I was dead oh, okay yeah, yeah right yeah, yeah. right well I, I, I ruptured uh, my fallopian I didn't rupture my fallopian tube <laughs> it happened to it happened that that happened and uh-huh. um, um, I survived yeah a, a close call and, and you you've if if we can talk about that briefly before oh, we yeah. hear another tune, you, you've you've been quite open and frank about it. But your marriage with uh, Jason Isbell and the issues that sometimes come up with that all married mm-hmm. couples have, and then also with this uh, near death experience, it was mm-hmm. uh, what um, a pregnancy of the um, fallopian tube. Uh, in so the fallopian it, tube outside it, of the uterus. Yeah, and so, so a pregnancy outside of the uterus, and then um, what had happened was <laughs> is um. For, I, I'm, is it okay if I talk about it a little bit just because I didn't know 
what this was that was happening to me. So in case somebody is out there listening, like, oh, this could be happening to me. I think it would be very informative. Okay. I, we've learned a lot about it. Oh, yeah, you yeah. have. <laughs> well, just you know, this and then, of course, uh, with, the, with the politics of you're right. from Texas yeah. and, and what happened uh, if, if – um, with the abortion laws that you mm. might not have been able to get the treatment you needed, right? Mm, right. So, first of all, if you have some kind of pain, don't just think it's a cyst again mm-hmm. on your on your ovary or something. Go ahead and see your doctor. Uh, even if you are a person like me with a high pain tolerance. Because um, what, what happened to me is I was on stage and then it, it was painful, but then the next day I was in the emergency room because I'd been internally bleeding for so long. Wow. And... Um, it's just wild, you know. Luckily, they were able to do the treatment and they were able to perform the surgery and all that needed. But there's a medicine that you could take that you can't take now to um, to abort the um, fertilized egg from your fallopian tube. tube mm-hmm. um, that that helps to um, you know. I guess you could call it a cure. Uh-huh. Uh, fix, fix, fix your, fix your body before you go into uh, almost dying. Right. But um, so ten days later, that was that was kind of off the table in Texas, and then now, as it stands, I don't know if they're going case by case in states or if they're doing the whole wait till it explodes, like most places are doing. So right. Right. So, so ectopic pregnancy is again is what you had, and so we'll some 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 idiots believe that you can reimplant that into the uterus. Okay. Yeah. Mm, wow. So so <laughs> the treatment for it is now in question due to the politics, but uh, and also when you feel a pain like that, whether it's appendicitis or whatever it might be, yeah. don't ignore it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Don't. Cause <laughs> see, I see didn't treatment. even know that this was a thing you could have. You, yeah. You know, I'd never heard of it. That just goes to show you, like where where. We were when I was raised in Texas, like as far as talking about our bodies and our health and all that. Right. Well, there's another thing that maybe since the pandemic as well, but also since some other changes in the last year. So we're we're talking about these these things a lot more openly. Yeah, it's the only thing good that came out of 2017. Maybe. Yeah, Yeah, it started conversations. (laughs) And we had the genesis of of some good songs like these uh, these ones that we now have before us from Amanda Shires. how about another tune? And uh, you're, you're going to be a guest DJ for us, too. you got some songs I selected. I, I do. I, I have so many ideas. <laughs> okay. I bet you're going to take over here. We're going to okay. give you an uh, afternoon air shift or evening air shift. You take over fine. my job if you want, if you're, if you're a morning person. We'll see if, you, Sounds if, like you if I'm okay like this because it's like I, don't, I haven't had any caffeine, but I've done my meditation, so it seems like super alert. Yes. But it's a you little are. bit like... <laughs> Pinky in the brain in there. <laughs> oh, you're fooling us. <laughs> you're pretty alert. Um, Amanda Shires here on WNCW. What are you going to play next? Uh, this one's a, a little ditty called Hawk for the Dove. I'm coming for you like a hawk for the dove You could call it serious trouble That's what I want You could call it serious trouble Just admit I'm what you want Pressure on me, I won't break. I want you in all the worst ways. Hold me down, feel me up. Come take it from me, mark me up. You could call it serious trouble. You could call it serious trouble Just admit I'm what you want Come on, you talking But I can't hear a thing Too caught up in the way 
say I want you rolling over me The spurs of hip bones in You pressing in Make me feel something again You could call it serious trouble That's what I Just admit I'm what you want That is Hawk for the Dove from Amanda Shires. I think that was the first single from this uh, new album that was released. And uh, just you and Zach uh, Sedgefield uh, this morning. But tonight, Grey Eagle, and on this big old tour, it's uh, how big of a band? What you got? I've got um, five. Five, five of, of you. us. All but right. we play like 15. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Full sound. All right. Yeah, Very yeah, good. Yeah. Cool. Um, so that's going, like I said, for a good 44 show tour. That's going to occupy your time. Yeah. Zach's in the band. Interestingly yep. enough, Lawrence Rothman has a brother, and their name is Bosch Rothman, or his name, because uh, his brother went to he, him. But um, yeah, he's the drummer. Okay. And they're brothers. Nice. And the it's other brother does music too. Wow. All yeah. right. Musical family. Uh huh. Yeah, I wonder what it's like at their house on Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, I wonder. Uh, I wonder if the music jives or if they're like totally different yeah. styles. Yeah. I don't know how you describe uh, Lawrence Rothman's uh, uh, music or sound, but the production on it for your record, I don't know it. Um, less of a kind of a country Americana direction mm. than your previous ones, I guess. Maybe you still consider it sort of country. Does it fit in country? Does it matter? I'm a country person, so you it should, counts yeah. as country music. Um, yeah, but um. You know, it, it's it's a question. It's these are all semantical questions, I guess, because there's different types and different, you know, what is it called, decades and all of that. And like like all things are that are living and still relevant. It took all of point A to get to current. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, you like done... I'm playing a fiddle. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> there's that. Yeah. <laughs> but I love the fiddle. You know, and why not make it like bring it up to to new sounds like maybe blend fiddle and violin because I learned both together and um, along with like you know uh, Irish tunes like the Chieftains you're playing later yeah yeah um, but I just feel like there's there's sounds and things that are worth exploring still oh yeah well the the, the fiddle and the way you played it's so adaptable to a variety of, of, of genres or flavors and, and all of that um Jason Isbell in the 400 unit played here uh, in, in Asheville earlier. I missed you. I was hoping you were going to be there, and you weren't. It's still a nice full sound, uh, but you bring this to your band, and then um, the, I guess you could say the other band, or the project you did, The High Women, mm -hmm. just to let folks know briefly, is there any other stuff in the works with them? We're, we've got a few more shows uh, on the books. It kind of It's kind of stalled during COVID, but sure. um, we played our Wrigley Field show, and then we've been talking about... Um, writing and sending songs back and forth and uh the conversations have have begun we've we've wandered out of out of the um talks of um swimming pools and um you know playing with our babies and started back right. into the territory of songwriting again yeah, yeah yeah okay great great well you all have just such a wonderful job breaking the, that glass ceiling such the high women did we didn't do it we didn't uh, break the gra glass well, ceiling yet so we have to keep working yes yes 2016 it was like 13 percent representation and 
now it's sitting at a beautiful 16%. Mm -hmm. So we got work to do still. So that means that the band is still necessary. There you go. And uh, there was, um, I saw some footage of the Newport Folk Festival, I guess a year ago. Yola joining you. That was a real highlight too. Oh, yeah. That was great. Yeah. Let's hear a tune from the actual record that we've been talking about. Mm. Um, I don't know, maybe Stupid Love, unless you wanted to do... Let's do it. That's a happy song. I played, you know, I played a sad one a minute ago. Should we do Stupid Love then? All right. Why not? Anything you want to say to kick this off? Sometimes um, when you're when you're going in for a kiss with the first person, or not a first person, like a person you've never kissed before, mm-hmm. maybe maybe you accidentally kiss with your teeth. That's what the first image is on this song, and then that image will lead you down to other images as you listen for, to the images in this song for the next two minutes and thirty seconds or however long it is. It's true. It's the uh, it's a uh, three minutes and change. Yeah, the oh, Perfect. the the first line in, the first right. line in this song. That you, it's just brilliant. Thank you for it. Uh, it's WNCW. I like little things. Details, <laughs> you know. <Yeah. laughs> it's a stupid love from Amanda Shires from the record. Mm. WNCW. Spindale. Incidentally, that happened when yeah. I kissed a girl when I was eighteen, and I just it stuck with me, and then it kept and it happened oh. again with a different person. Uh, did that form its? Did, did the, you just think of that, or is that? Yeah, I just remembered that. that oh, okay. it's happened more than once. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I just like people with crooked teeth. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. We'll see what other memories are conjured from Amanda as we listen to this. I'm oversharing. <laughs> <laughs> it's WNCW Spindale WSIF Wilkesboro.